Exactly. Lie number one. The gluten-free diet is dangerous to follow if you're not gluten sensitive. And I, the reason why I bring this up is because some of you may have gone gluten-free, but your family members are hesitant because they've been told, oh, you need to eat your whole grain. That person's gluten sensitive, but you need to eat your whole grain because if you don't, it's dangerous and you're going to become malnourished. And that's just not true. And honestly, if you've got somebody in your household who's gone gluten-free, you need to support that. You need to not eat gluten in the household because the home needs to be that one person's safe haven that they can trust that they're not going to get cross-contamination. There's actually no scientific evidence that exists that would show avoidance of grain causes human disease or malnutrition. Not one shred of evidence, despite what you see, hear, or read about how whole grains and cereals are so good for us. Why do we assume that grain is such a healthy food? And the Food Guide Pyramid recommends large quantities of grain as a staple in the diet. As a matter of fact, as many as eight servings a day. Why do they recommend that? Any, any takers? Yeah, because the grain industry is subsidized by U.S. tax dollars, right? And so it's easy to feed 300 million people, okay, when, when we have a cheap and genetically modified food that can feed a lot of people. So, did you know that in 1943 the U.S. government mandated that you couldn't sell grain in this country because it caused disease? That's right. Beriberi and pellagra are two diseases that we know grain was responsible for causing. Beriberi and pellagra are vitamin B deficiency diseases. And um, the U.S. government in 1943 says you're not going to be able to sell grain without fortifying it with synthetic vitamins so that it, we don't end up causing disease in the people who are eating it. And so in that, in that year when that happened, what, what did the cereal manufacturers, what did the bread companies do? They started fortifying their products. And what ended up happening is they started intelligently marketing those products saying, now fortified, so it's even better for you. As opposed to saying fortified by law or it will cause disease, they said the message, they changed the message and people bought the message lock, stock and barrel because Look, even today, you go to a cardiologist's office and they tell you eat whole grain to lower your cholesterol, even though whole grain will raise your blood pressure. And eating whole grain will make you fat. And when you get fat, you increase your risk for cardiovascular disease. So why would a cardiologist recommend that? Because he's bought the same marketing message without studying nutrition very adequately. Detrimental qualities of grain, including whole grain, are as follows. The seeds are doused with chemical hormones. They're sprayed with pesticides like atrazine to aid in growth. These chemicals can mimic estrogen and cause hormone disruption in both men and women. This is one of the reasons why breast cancer is on the rise. This is one of the reasons why prostate cancer is on the rise. This is one of the reasons why we see so many different hormone disruptions in females. All you have to do is turn on the TV and you hear about hormones and balancing hormones and everybody's talking about hormones. You look in the water supply and we have all this estrogen. You look in our grain supply and we have all this artificial estrogen. Again, that's one of the detriments. Uh, grains are low in essential fatty acids, EPA and DHA. So they're very low in omega-3 fatty acids. Now, omega-3 fatty acids are essential. That means your body can't make them and it has to get them from the diet. And so being low in these types of fatty acids actually promotes inflammation. Okay, what does the cardiologist do when you go in and your cholesterol is high? If he talks about nutrition, he might prescribe a drug called Lavaza. Do you know what Lavaza is? It's omega-3 fatty acids. Okay, so he tells you to eat a food that counters omega-3 fatty acids and he prescribes you something to take as omega-3 fatty acids. It's a poor source of complete protein. In other words, grain is not a very good source of protein and can cause protein malnutrition. We can see this in third world countries quite a lot. You guys ever heard of the disease Quashior course? This is a disease referring to protein malnourishment. If you ever see the, the TV late night commercials where they're asking you for your money for the starving kids in Africa, do you know what their staple diets are in those regions? Grain. And you see their little bellies that come out to here? Okay. That is actually inflammation. Okay. It's inflammation. And so they have protein malnourishment and they're retaining a lot of water in their abdomen and that's why they look that way. It's not that they're fat contain enzyme inhibitors and the, so the grains actually have chemicals within them that block your body's ability to be able to digest them and so when you eat it this is why it can cause irritable bowel syndrome for so many people so many people that eat grain get a diagnosis of IBS right 
And then they're told to eat more whole grains so that, that it helps their bowel movement and it just exacerbates the condition. Okay. Grains contain additive proteins that can alter behavior, or rather addictive proteins that can alter behavior, mood, and contribute to mental dysfunction. One of the most original names for gluten sensitivity is called bread madness. That's right. Bread madness. And we knew then, and this was uh, over 50 years ago, that grain could induce a schizoaffective-like disorder in many people. And that was termed bread madness. We know that um, they contain anti-nutrients that can cause malabsorption of calcium and iron. This is again why the government mandated that we fortify grains with synthetic nutrients so that we didn't end up with the malnutritive properties that they would induce. And then they contain autoimmune inducing peptides and lectins. Gluten is an example, but there are other proteins in grains. There was a new one just discovered last year called GLO3A as a protein found in wheat that was also shown to cause celiac disease. So, you know, the premise of celiac disease, even to that extent, we'll get into that in a minute, is even actually flawed in terms of what causes it, because there are multiple things that can cause it. And grains can also cause sodium and water retention. That's what I was talking about, too, with those children, those third world children. And then cause excessive insulin response, leading to weight gain and diabetes. So, what's the fastest way to fatten up a cow or a pig? Grain. That's why we do it. Oh, no doubt. You, you, well, the fermentation occurs after long enough exposure and you create an imbalance in microbiotic flora and usually it's associated with a yeast overgrowth and what ends up happening is the grain, instead of being digested, turns into an alcohol distillery and so you start making your own little alcohol right there in your gut and this is where brain fog for many people who are on grain diets comes from. They get a lot of brain fog, they have non-alcoholic fatty liver damage, so yeah, good point. This list could be much longer, certainly. So, I think ultimately the question that we have to ask, though, if, if, we're, if we're saying we need to go gluten-free, what is the real reason? It's, it's, not for, it's not just because it's fun, right? We all probably grew up eating things that were grain-oriented or grain-based. So the whole purpose of going gluten-free is if you've got gluten sensitivity, it's to help maintain and restore your, well, first restore your health and then secondarily to maintain your health. So that being the case, why do so many choose unhealthy foods? And that's another part of the gluten-free lie, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Processed gluten-free food is a billion-dollar food industry. If gluten-free processed food is not good for you, how, you know, how is it that so many people continue to eat it? And this is, again, where we look at the studies that show as many as 92% of the patients going on a gluten-free diet don't heal. You know, there was a study just published a couple months ago where they put patients on a true gluten-free diet. Okay, They took these patients who were, they call them refractory, meaning they don't respond to the diet. And they said, okay, we're going to take them off of all processed gluten-free foods. And we're just going to let them eat real food. Right? And you know that the majority of those people who weren't healing started to heal. Right? And that study, I think it was 84% of the patients who didn't respond to the traditional gluten-free diet responded to a real whole food diet without grain. 